it was either the 80s or the 90s that a Jewish uh, business owner opened up a store uh, on 125th Street uh, in the midst of what was then becoming the uh, gentrification of, 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 of the community known as Harlem. And Al Sharpton, who was just recovering from a, a, a lot of various things with the Tawana Brawler event, was able to garner one of the news people to come, and he called the Jewish store owner that it had rented a store from the United Church here in, on, on 125th Street. He called the Jewish business owner an interloper. Somehow or another, the media picked it up, and the word got floated around as a fancy word that didn't look like it fit the character or the vocabulary, vocabulary structure of Al Sharpton, an interloper, and it got fed in the media cycle for about a week. But what Al Sharpton was doing is that he had began to protest white people coming to Harlem to take the community. In the words of Al Sharpton was, white people are coming to, to steal Harlem from poor black people. In the words of Al Sharpton in the interloper, what Al Sharpton said about that Jewish store owner was that white people are at it again a land grabbing like they did when they first landed in America. And they're here now to take poor black people's Harlem and turn it white. And so when the Jewish uh, land uh, business owner was attacked, a group of Jews, the same group of Jews that are now backing uh, Eric Adams. Eric Adams is mayor of New York City only because the Jews backed him. And the Jews who controlled the media in New York, they controlled everything from signs that go on buses to pictures that go on milk cartons. The Jews uh, promoting, Eric, he, is their, he is their boy, Eric Adams. We're not for Jews, so get ready for a lot of Jewish for Eric Adams to start talking Yiddish. Get, get ready for it. Uh, he, they may even bar mitzvah for the boy. Because uh, he's going to be their little girl uh, for his term. But going back to Al Sharpton, Al Sharpton was then approached by a group of wealthy Jewish bankers, lawyers, who sat Al Sharpton down in the cotton club and brought with them a, a, one of the old suitcases with the snap locks on it, didn't have no wheels on it, had a handle on it. Remember them old suitcases? And it had $800,000 in it. Now, somebody said it really had a million, but before it got down, they, they were going to give them Al shop to one cool million, but somebody lifted $200,000 but before it got to Al. Well, Al, can only, Al walked away and only had 800000 but that's not the point. The point is, is that they told Al, you know, this interloper thing you've used against this Jewish businessman is resounding and is getting the people in Harlem all riled up. We'll give you a million dollars if you'll promise us you will never, ever again lead a march against gentrification, against interloping, against what you, Al Sharpton, is saying that white people are robbing and pilfering and stealing Harlem and driving black, poor black people out of business and in the shelters. If you will promise us you will never lead a protest against, against our business development, buying, banking, rezoning, we give you a million dollars. Now, I heard that Al only got 800000 I don't know what I'm doing the other 200000 But since that day, Al been zip-lip. Ain't no interlopers no more. Al has been zip-lip. I thought you might want to know that. In fact, I'm, I'm, I, you need to know that I shopped and sold Harlem for $800,000. And he's never led a protest march since that inter, the day of the interloper. He never led another protest. But I, 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 I want to say a couple of things about Al, if you don't mind, and I'm going to let y'all go. I figure you got something to do. But I figure you want to hear what I have to say before I finally turn you loose. Al Shopton says that the taking of Harlem 
by rich, wealthy bankers, lawyers, developers is justice. And as a result of that, he's made peace with the Jewish bankers. He's made peace with the Jewish developers. He says it's justice, so there's peace. So you won't see Al Sharpton up here talking. In fact, he don't even live in Harlem. Al Sharpton lived down on, at least he was living down on 72nd Street uh, in a high rise down there paying $13,000 to a landlord. Now that may be, he may be getting kickbacks. But I want to pull your coat to this, this man that sold Harlem single-handedly, <laughs> unilaterally. So holler for eight hundred for a million dollars, but they only got eight hundred thousand. I don't know what up who who got the other two hundred thousand before Alka walked out of the Cotton Club with the suitcase. But your know, Al Shop is one of the biggest deadbeats in New York City. If you go and search the county records or the court records of all the lawsuits that have been filed by creditors against Al Sharpton. <laughs> you pack a lunch. <laughs> Cause that boy ain't never paid no, you talking about Donald Trump don't pay no better. Al Sharpton pays less than, than Donald Trump. He got kicked out of the Empire State Building. You had a little office in the Empire State Building, had a rental office, it wasn't much. He had to back in and back out. They didn't even have a bathroom. He had to walk down the hall. But he had to set up his National Action Network in the Empire State Building. Never paid rent. He, Al Sharpton, <laughs> check this out. Al Sharpton bamboozled the landlord of the Empire State Building here on 34th Street and 5th Avenue for two years. Didn't pay him a dime. It took them two years to kick him out of there in court because Al went to court and didn't pay. For two years, he had his office at the Empire State Building. Biggest deadbeat in New York City. Not only that, but Al has some vans, you know, these 15 passenger vans, Ford, Chevrolet vans, whatever it is, Dodge Ram. Had, Al had a couple of them parked in front of the Empire State Building. And the man with the hook, <laughs> the take back man. Oh, it was a big thing, man. Al Sharpton had the, the, man, the take back man, the, the sheriff, put a hook in Al Sharpton's van because he had all the little, his little sycophants riding around in that van when he out, went out there to do something to protest, right? Al came out the Empire State Building one day and his vans were gone because <laughs> Al didn't pay his mortgage, didn't pay his, uh, his car note. Not only did he, kicked out, did, he, did he get kicked out of the Empire State Building, but he got kicked out of the Canaan Baptist Church. Why Walker's about as liberal as he could be, late wide Walker, about as liberal as you could be. Let Al set up his, his shop in the, Empire, in the Canaan Church once he got kicked out of the Empire State, right? So he have a place in Harlem, try to keep him honest, even in the church. But even Wyatt Walker and the members of the Canaan Baptist Church couldn't stomach Al Sharpton. They kicked him out of there. So now he got this little Ricky Dink joint up on 145th Street. Looked like a chicken coop. I swear, <laughs> I wouldn't even go anything. I, that, that, that's, that's, the, that's the mighty National Action Network headquarters. <laughs> the big time Al Sharpton. You know why? Because nobody would give him a lease. He could do better because he got he, he's getting money now. He, he owes a lot of people and he's keep moving his bank accounts, hiding his money under all, all kinds of names, hiding his money. But the reason why he the reason why he's there, he could afford something else. But no landlord in their right mind will rent Al Sharpton because they know he don't pay. He's the biggest debt. They know Al Sharpton don't pay his rent. That, that boy don't pay no. He might make a deposit, but after that, you'll take, it took the Empire State Building nearly two years to get Al Sharpton out of the Empire State Building. They tried to do it quietly. They didn't want to disturb all the black people, you know. But you, you check the court records. Al Sharpton got over 100 lawsuits, or we got somewhere there about, of creditors that Al Sharpton never paid. Never paid them. Never gave him a dime. Everybody from printers or po printing up his poster stuff or, or whatever, the landlords. Al don't, Al, Al, you check the record. The other thing is that Al Sharpton, you know, is now some sort of, if you will, news anchor on MSNBC. If that ain't a joke, I don't know what is. I mean, he was fresh on there uh, once Obama became president. MSNBC, who are greedy for... Uh, uh, the, uh, the black audience, uh, Hamite people, black people, uh, wanted to get them so that he, they figured, and also wanted to get interviews with Obama. And for whatever reason, Al Sharpton and Obama became tighter than two peas in a pod. I don't know what it was about Obama that drew him to Al Sharpton. I knew why, you know, Vernon Jordan and Bill Clinton got together. I understood that. 
You know, you would think Obama would have gotten together with somebody like, you know, Cornel West, maybe. You know, one of them types. Or, you know, or would have gotten together with, you know, some, some of these others, you know, people from intelligentsia, you know, or gotten together with one of the actors, like the Smith Boy, or, you know, gotten together with one of them. He takes up with the likes of Al Shop, they become tighter than two peas in a pod. Hugging one another. Al Sharpton went to the White House over 80 times. That's the count that we were given while Obama was, was president. But anyway, no, so he, I, he was, he, MSNBC gave Al Sharpton a job. After Al Sharpton got kicked out of the Empire State Building, after Al Sharpton was called a rat, a snitch, after it was intimated by the FBI and by the New York Post, that Al Sharpton was a drug dealer or a cohorting with drug dealers in Harlem, in Harlem, the black people. The New York Post, the FBI labeled him CI-7, confidential informant 7. Al Sharpton wore a wire. After all of that, alleged to have been selling drugs to Harlem people, MSC gives him a job as an anchor. Go figure. What the hell? I mean, did they give Nikki Barnes? What about John Gotti? I mean, imagine if MSNBC had given John Gotti an, a, 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 a five o'clock anchor spot on their broadcast. I mean, can you imagine? I mean, what, what is this? Or if, if Fox News or gave David Duke a weekly broadcast, a nightly broadcast, what is it with MSNBC and Al Sharpton? And the other thing, Al can't read. The boy cannot read a teleprompter. He's stumbling. Uh 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 I thought he was rapping. He can't read. Check him out. He's been on there now for a year and he still can't read. You'll think somebody will teach him how to read. But here, he and Obama are tighter than two peas in a pod. And I'm trying to figure out why. I guess I'll never know. Maybe some of y'all know. Some of y'all drop me a line and tell me. But yeah, the interloper got Al Sharpton a million dollar payoff. Show sure did. Show sure did. And you can go back in to find that, that story and go back now and Al Sharpton and let the Al Sharpton say gentrification is justice. The, these, these wealthy white folk coming up here to Harlem, these LGBTQ people coming up here to Harlem taking Harlem by storm, tearing down, burning over, bulldozing over, buying up churches and bulldozing over. Al Sharpton said, that's justice. So I got peace. What the interlopers, what the white folk, what the gentrifiers are doing to black people in Harlem. I got peace, Al says. Keep my job down at MSNBC. But I, I thought you might want to know about that. That's what I'm telling you. I thought you won't, might want to Understand that I, I've done my homework about this uh, Al Sharpton saying that uh, there's no predatory lending, there, there's no predatory activity, and there's no predatory development, there is no seizing and foreclosing of mom and pop property, that, there's no foreclosing of that. Al says he's good to go. And he's quietly living down on, I don't know where he lives now, but this is about three, four years ago I was down there where he lived on 72nd Street. I have no idea where the boy's living now. But he says that uh, he's good to go with what's happening up here in Harlem. <laughs> you got more homeless people now sleeping on the streets now in Harlem I've ever seen in all my days of living in New York City or the days about Skid Row and the days about the Great Depression, uh, the days about Tin Pan Alley. I've, 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 I've never seen as many people sleeping on the streets as you got in Harlem now. And all thanks to Al Shopter. All thanks to what Al has done. Al, and, and these interlopers, you know, the, the, I'll call them interlopers, you know, uh, these interlopers have no mercy. They, don't, they walk by these people like they don't exist. These white people, 
These white, these white people up here in Harlem, these white people, they, especially the LGBTQ ones, they walk by like these people don't exist. They're sleeping on the street. They sometimes they have to step over them. And somebody have to actually act that. There's so many sleeping in the streets of Harlem now. These, these interlopers, and I'll call them interlopers. I, I call them LGBTQ. They sometimes have to actually step out in traffic to get around. There's so many people on the street and so many drug addicts that are, that are, that are, that are shooting up dope on the street. And Al says he's okay with that. The great champion of black people, the great leader of black, no justice, no peace, no justice, no peace, no justice, no peace, no justice, no peace, no justice, no peace. The great Al Sharpton says he's good for what's happened to Harlem, Fort Greene, and wherever these developers can take property under their predatory uh, structure as identified by the federal lending laws. Al says, I'm good with it. But I want to know, I'm sorry, I'm good. I want to know, I heard that it was that they were, the Jewish, after that antelope, after Al attacked that Jewish, that Jewish uh, store owner on, a, on 125th Street, that they, they offered a cool million dollars. I mean, who offers you $800,000? If you're going to offer something, it's going to be, if it's that close, then why not make it a million? I want to know, does anybody know? Anybody know what happened to that eight hundred, the other two hundred thousand dollars? And God helped that lawyer, of the, the, the Abyssinian Baptist Church, that lost his law license fooling around with Al Sharpton and Tawana Brawley. This boy has been disaster from day one to present, and I'm here to reveal the truth. Y'all pray for me. Because I understand he's been coming at me as well. He's trying to get the courts, and now that we got Eric Adams, who has become a puppet of the Jews here in New York City, he's coming at me too. But uh, we're going we to stand up, and we're going to win. I'm the Lord's servant, and don't you ever forget it.
Delete.